And Dave, we're just moments away from taking you to Death Valley in Clemson, South Carolina, where Sammy Watkins is returning from an abdominal virus that kept him out last week. Sammy Watkins leading the Tigers against Georgia Tech, and Georgia Tech has owned Clemson. They've won five of the last six. The Yellow Jackets spoiled the Tigers' 8-0 start last year, but this Yellow Jacket team had some, has had some trouble tackling. You think, is that fair to say? That comes up at the bottom of the hour, Georgia Tech and Clemson. So we're just a few minutes away from that. Lou's going to turn on his microphone. Orange is the color of fall, but it's always in vogue in Clemson, South Carolina. The Tigers have returned home on the first Saturday of October for a date with old foe Georgia Tech. And lately, this rivalry is hotter than ever. It's picked off by Dominique Reese, and he's going to take it in. Touchdown. To the outside, Dwyer, touchdown. Sims again, huge hole, dives, touchdown. Today, Taj Boyd and the Tigers look for payback for last year's upset loss to the rambling wreck of Georgia Tech. the ACC on ESPN. Welcome to college football presented by cars.com. Clemson and Georgia Tech first played in 1898 and today it's their 78th meeting. The Yellow Jackets have won five of the last six. Good afternoon everybody. Mike Patrick, Ed Cunningham, it's great to have you with us. Janine Edwards will join us shortly. Clemson comes into this game 4-1. and one. They're only lost a powerful Florida State. When you look ahead at the rest of their schedule and the talent they have on this football team, particularly on offense, it's not much of a stretch to think they could run the table. And the bad news for the rest of their schedule starting today, they get Sammy Watkins back. He missed the game last week against Boston College, and it is all led by Taj Boyd. This young man struggled last year against Georgia Tech. He is so much better this season, especially in the run game. One of the great scenes in all of college football, the Tigers coming down the hill and rubbing Howard's rock. Georgia Tech travels to Clemson, South Carolina after an embarrassing loss to Middle Tennessee. And I think they have to look at this game as a must-win situation. You start to worry about morale if you lose a game like this. And I think if you look at their schedule at the beginning of the season, North Carolina, Duke, BYU, schools like that, you thought this team would win. If, if their morale right. goes down after this loss, this could be a difficult run. But the good news is they still have Tevin Washington quarterback, and he had a pretty good game last year against this defense. And remember, Clemson, young and inexperienced, that's not good against the option. Last year, Tevin Washington key Tech's upset. He had 176 rushing yards. That's a school record for a quarterback. Can he come up with an encore today in Death Valley? Welcome back to Death Valley. Working the sidelines for us this afternoon, Janine Edwards. Let's check in with her right now. Janine. Well, Mike, 2011 ACC Rookie of the Year, Sammy Watkins, has only seen action in one and a half games this season. He missed the first two weeks due to a suspension for a drug arrest, and then he missed last week's game with an abdominal virus. Watkins told me he was so sick, he didn't eat for four days, and he spent two days going back and forth to the hospital. Now, he does say that he feels back to 100%, but offensive coordinator Chad Morris told me he doesn't think Watkins is quite back to game-playing shape, so he'll see about 55 of their roughly 80 plays today and guys in this heat Watkins energy level is definitely something we should keep an eye on. Thank you Janine. Dabo Sweeney now in his fifth season running the Tigers campaign. He's coming off an ACC championship the school first in 20 years. Clemson 
will receive and Sammy Watkins at the one yard line waiting on the kick. When he went to the hospital they were really concerned about his blood work. It was off the charts every which way. And they're very grateful to have him back. David Scully to kick it away 12 touchbacks in 32 kicks gets a good one this time and drives Watkins eight yards deep. Clemson quarterback Taj Boyd needs just one more touchdown pass to set the all time school career record. He has become the undisputed offensive leader of this ball club. And it was the game against Georgia Tech last year that started to show some flaws in his game. And he admitted, Boyd admitted, he'd kind of let some of that hype start to go to his head. He ballooned up to 235 pounds. And Dabo Sweeney said he kind of looked like a pumpkin in that game because we were playing just before. Halloween and we were in all orange but he went to work in the offseason he's much slimmer and he's much better in the run game than he was at the end of last season so many weapons flanker screen Watkins a towel chew who was a big addition to this Georgia Tech defense he's coming back off of an injury he may be their best athlete and last week against Middle Tennessee State this defense played with such a lack of energy and we talked to Al Groh this week and he said you get a Tao Chu back. You get Lewis Young back at corner, who also didn't play. Two of our best energy guys. Hopefully, that'll be a help. Ellington behind Boyd, and Ellington will get the carry. Todd McShay, in his rating, says Ellington is the number three running back prospect in next year's draft. And the one thing you notice with this offense. This offensive line is better than it was last year for Clemson. It's the first thing Paul Johnson pointed out. That one, no white shirts were able to get clean at the line of scrimmage. Great scene. Fake the end around to Watkins, and Boyd unloads. Hopkins is down there. Some contact, some hand fighting. No call. Rod Sweeting was right with him. Let's take a look at today's impact players. Brought to you by Firestone, Ed. For the Clemson Tigers, DeAndre Hopkins, a guy who has exploded with Watkins out Hopkins game Hopkins has really stepped up his game and of course you get Sammy Watkins back arguably two of the best receivers in the country as a tandem thrown underneath Watkins barely got his head around when the ball went by him so many weapons on this team you got Hopkins on one side Watkins on the other in a normal alignment Ellington the tight end Ford has been good. Ford has really come on. Remember, Dwayne Allen won the Mackey Award here last year. He's now with the Colts. And Ford, who is his roommate. And then Taj Boyd himself, who's such a dangerous player, running and throwing. Pressure on Boyd. Got him from behind. And it's a towel chew. The young man who was born in Nigeria followed his dad to the United States. And has found a home at outside linebacker at Georgia Tech. And going up against Gifford Timothy, who's got a little bit of a gimpy knee, and that was a good get off. I'm not so sure that the injury to Timothy doesn't slow him down a little bit. That's going to be a challenge with that speedster outside. Jamal Golden with a flag down reaches the 28 yard line. But, but Atalchu was a guy that they sorely missed last week. He brings energy. You see the speed. He's probably their best all around size and speed athlete you saw that there good job by Al Groh putting on someone probably saw on film that Timothy the right tackle maybe had been a little slow out of his stance so you put your fastest guy over there and usually you put him over the left tackle because that's the quarterback's blind side but I think that's Al Groh saying I think we might have a matchup we like it illegal substitution on the receiving team got penalties declined first down and incidentally, uh, just to finish up on the towel, too, he was all conference a year ago in the ACC. Tevin Washington comes out for Tech. He has stepped up his game this year, dramatically increasing his completion percentage. He is second in the country in rushing touchdown. He has 11. He got four of them last week. Smith and Godhigh are the outside backs, and Clemson swarms the first play. And Corey Crawford was all over Orwin Smith. And Brent Venables, the first-year defensive coordinator, brought from Oklahoma during the offseason. 
meeting with him about this defense so young they lost three defensive linemen to the NFL off of last year's team but a lot of guys in their second and third levels their linebackers and DBs played against Georgia Tech last year and had some assignment issues so big play early but they can't get bored doing their job that's the problem Washington on the keeper takes it past the original line of scrimmage and let's take a look at the impact players brought to you by Firestone. For Georgia Tech, a guy who's had a monster career, Orwin Smith. His number's down a little bit this year, but he does have a 77-yard touchdown run, so he can get explosive plays. And we've already seen Jeremiah Talchu, the big difference that he makes. And this defense that has really struggled over a thousand yards given up in the last two games needed 45 back. Usually a passing situation is a weak link, but Washington completing nearly 70% of his passes this year. That was ugly but effective as he dumped it off and got it to Tony Zenon out of the backfield. Zenon, however, going to be about a yard shy of a first down. And this is an area where Paul Johnson historically has gone for. He's very aggressive on this side of the field with this offense. And I think if, if you're going to go here, you need some type of misdirection because Clemson's flying to the ball right now. Get them going the wrong way. They always think they can yep. get a yard, don't they? And I, and I like it. I think this is good, aggressive coaching. Sims may be their best back, number 20. In normal terms, the fullback, and they may have just yeah. been trying to pull Clemson offside, and the Tigers aren't buying. You saw all the motion and all of the shifting. That's exactly what they were trying to do. We've got a timeout, 11.38 to go on a scoreless first quarter clock. Fourth down facing the Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech as we welcome you back to Frank Howard Field Memorial Stadium, more commonly known as Death Valley here at Clemson. It is still one of the most impressive buildings in the country to drive up to when you come down Isn't the it? hill and you see how steep the upper decks are in this place. It's almost like the fans are going to fall down onto the field from the 300 level. Terrific place. You have to really want to watch a football game in person to sit in the top row. They come out looking as they'll go for it again. Fourth and short. Quarterback keeper, Washington. I don't think so. I, I don't get the call. I, I don't mind the aggressive nature of doing this, but you call a timeout. You do all the shifting to try to get Clemson to jump off, and then you come and just try to run a quarterback sneak. I'm not sure why you wouldn't get on the edge. Clemson has not been good defensively on the edge. They got chopped down like trees against Florida State on the perimeter. I just don't get the call of running a quarterback sneak. I think it's too conservative. Not even close enough to measure. They turn it over on downs. And Paul Johnson just, he put his hand up to Tevin Washington. He's talking to Tevin Washington right now. I don't think that was the call. I think Paul Johnson had a, a different call, and, and if you look right before the snap, Washington looked just a second like he was confused. I, I don't think that was the play call by Paul Johnson. Well, whether it was or not, it didn't work, no. and it turns the ball over on downs to Clemson. The Tigers with unbelievable field position, starting at the Georgia Tech 36-yard line. Ellington. Gets a couple, and we check in with Janine Edwards. Well, guys, the first thing that offensive coordinator Chad Morris does when the Clemson offense comes off the field is ask the O-line what they saw. He did that, but then he immediately said to them, guys, you look sluggish out there. You've got to pick up the pace. And he said the same thing to Taj Boyd. Want him to pick up the pace. Janine, they're going to have to match the intensity of Atalchu, who's been all over the field so far. Boyd on a little half roll, throws to the sideline, and it is caught. What a grab by Gerard Brown, but there is a flag back near the 40-yard line. Yeah, they're going to get a Tauchu who's holding on Sammy Watkins as he tries to clear. That's not a catch. That ball clearly hits the ground, so they'll take the penalty on the hold by a Tauchu, but you can't blame number 45. Holding on the defense, number 45. A penalty declined. First down. They have to, this will be reviewed, though. And they'll have to give Clemson, in fairness, the chance to accept the penalty. Surprised they haven't stopped this already because that ball clearly hit the ground, was not a completion. Yeah, the officials on the field obviously haven't seen it. Well, I'm surprised the replay has not stopped this yet. That ball, did I miss it? That ball looked like it hit the grass, did it not? I thought so. Yeah. 
Watkins trying to use that speed to get to the outside. Makes the first tackler miss gets down to the 15 yard line. Let's go back one more time to the catch by Brown. Let's see if his hands did in fact get underneath the ball. Uh, that's not a catch. It no. drops between his arms. That, that's that, upstairs. Remember, they're looking at the exact same things we're looking at. They have to stop that. I, I'm not sure it would have mattered because you had the penalty anyway. Well, it matters because yeah. you want to get it right. Well, but you would have ended up actually with more yards on the penalty. So net for Georgia Tech, I guess. Because it was a 10 yard holding penalty essentially at the line of scrimmage on the defense plus the first down over again. So. He actually should have accepted it if you're Clemson. Ellington had his helmet pop off. He has to leave for a play. One of the new rules in college football this year for safety. And guys, you know, historically, guys with long hair, because there's so much hair between their helmet and their and their uh, skull, that it's harder to get the helmet on tight because that hair makes the helmet move around a lot. Played with a lot of guys who had a lot of hair, and they said their helmet came off more often than when they had short hair. Boyd in the gun fakes it to Watkins keeps it himself Taj Boyd first down at the 10. Good job by Tyler Shatley the right guard pulling and running interference. Now you're in that tough situation first and goal. Clemson very good touchdowns at almost 74 percent when they're inside the red zone but this is a tough one. You get that first and goal from the nine. You don't have the vertical stretch. Look for a run here. Ellington. Nowhere to go. Straight up the middle. How come every first and goal situation we see this year first and nine. is at the nine yard line? It's amazing. Yeah. Well, they've yet to be able to spring Ellington certainly inside. There hasn't been much room there. Well, you've got Sammy Watkins lined up really close to the quarterback over to the right. Watch this over here. There's a lot of space to his right. Something looks like it's going on to that side. They shift forward, then bring Watkins back this way. And throw to Watkins. Open in the flat. Dives. Got to the one foot line. If you don't remember, this guy last year could have been the best player in the country. He was one of four true freshmen ever named as a first team AP all American and this is why Clemson and teams that run have this type of talent that move them around this much are so difficult to defend you lose track of him. he's lined over in a stack to the right he comes over and the coverage is completely misses basically a swing pass to a running back but it's one of the most elite athletes in the country who happens to be in the flat third and goal quarterback keeper boy touchdown. They make you cover sideline to sideline and you can't do it because they're faster than you are. And look who came in motion to throw a little decoy in was Sammy Watkins. That was three times that Watkins came in that cross motion in front of the quarterback and it put Georgia Tech on their heels. And that draws everybody's attention. We've seen some really poor kicking this year but we won't out of Catanzaro. He is one of the best. When you have a guy back in your lineup with the speed and elusiveness of Sammy Watkins, the play before he ran the exact same motion, he was open in the flat. That time he's a complete decoy. Good quarterback run by Boyd. This is tough to defend. ESPN College Football is presented by Cars.com, where confidence comes standard. And in part by Buick. Experience your kind of convenience, peace of mind, entertainment, and luxury. 81,500 have come to Death Valley this afternoon to watch their Clemson Tigers take on Georgia Tech. Clemson took advantage of Georgia Tech turning it over on downs and the going for it on fourth down blew up in Georgia Tech's face. Clemson only had to go 37 yards. They really don't need a short field. And the one thing that Chad Morris said about Taj Boyd, they don't like to call too many quarterback runs because he's such a good thrower. They don't want him too exposed. But for some reason, Boyd really gets into the flow faster if you let him run it early. That was a pretty good run there to score. Orwin Smith on the return for Georgia Tech. 
VCS countdown is on ESPN and ESPN U tomorrow a day after the dust has settled our analysts break down how this week's game impacted the standings look ahead to next week's key matchups VCS countdown presented by Discover Card tomorrow night at 830 Eastern on ESPN then at 9 on ESPN U and you mentioned in the open what happens if Clemson wins out they've got a tough one at home obviously at the end against South Carolina but they went out we all forget there's two years left in the BCS you get to That's two right. BCS bowl games in a row profile goes up a little more money pretty good deal Washington with the throw and a beauty complete to Autry Anthony Autry off to the races in his first career start all the way to the 30 and a nice throw by Washington and one of the things that Paul Johnson did offensively was start to shift around some personnel and because Georgia Tech is so good with so many players around the line of scrimmage you have to play a lot of one on one coverage and that time Gary Peters the corner had to come up to play the run and the safety was laid over the top. These are the types of throws that drive defensive coordinators crazy trying to defend this offense. Jonathan Meeks missed the tackle. We have seen such poor tackling this year. It's been an issue in the last five years, guys, unable to tackle in space. And David Sims, who's out of St. Matthews, South Carolina, and wanted to play in this game in the worst way because he grew up completely not a Clemson fan. <laughs> Wanted to play against him. He's been banged up all year. Came into this game with only 18 carries, but he's out there right now. Second call at eight for Georgia Tech. Washington throws again. Wallace makes this catch. Knocked down at the 16-yard line. And I think Paul Johnson, because Tevin Washington has gotten more efficient throwing the ball, they worked very hard on his footwork during the offseason. He's got an OK arm. He can get it out there. He understands timing right now. You get a sense that Paul Johnson wants to pull some of those orange shirts away from the line of scrimmage, if at all possible. Washington in the top 10 in his career in seven different statistical categories for Georgia Tech. Runs the option again, wants to throw again. Caught at the goal line. Touchdown, Georgia Tech. Their leading receiver, Jeff Green, fought his way in for his second touchdown of the season. Well, Clemson just completely forgot to cover Jeff Green. They lost him as they broke the huddle. A corner blitz is coming, and the safety meets who had missed the tackle before. I, I, you will call a corner blitz in that situation. So I think the call was correct. I think the safety was late again getting over there. That's two plays in a row. And I think it's exactly what Paul Johnson saw on tape. Well, it's a 53-yarder. on Previous board. play is on a further review. Ruling on the field is touchdown. Yeah, they're going to check the touchdown. Because he missed a tackle in the open field after getting there late, that was a 53-yard gain. Then he doesn't get there at all at the goal line. And the one thing I think Paul Johnson knew that Clemson would do was bring those corners. It's one way you blow up the option is to bring those corners. And he had the perfect play. And unfortunately, Meeks for Clemson was late getting over there. I think it's a touchdown. Looked to me like neither knee touched the ground. Yeah, I thought the ball broke the plane Let's as well. Let's see if that right knee, no, nope, doesn't touch. That's a touchdown. And right to review that. They I think the only question is, did the point of the ball break the plane? Yeah, because it's right at the edge. But the ruling on the field, remember, was a touchdown. So you have to find indisputable, indisputable yeah. video evidence to overturn it. Maybe this will give us a better look. Oh, nice job, guys. Here, here's the here's the critical. I think he crossed the goal line, so therefore, yeah, it's right on it. Yeah, he has to. You have to uh, make that stand. The front edge of the ball touches the front edge of the goal line. It's a touchdown. And there's not enough evidence to overturn that, certainly. But how about uh, Paul Johnson bringing out the uh, air raid offense here to start this game? That's not a, exactly what Brett Venables would expect. The numbers, the passing numbers have been up for Georgia Tech, but a lot of that is because they've been behind in That's some right. ball games. It was just a function of we don't have a choice but to throw. I just think there's. Meeks was completely caught off guard, I think, because there's a safety who likes to play down around the box. At After further two, review, the ruling on the field stands, touchdown. But I think Meeks was completely caught off guard when the, when the blitz was called and when that first throw got over the corner's head. 
got himself out of position. Well, Paul Johnson is going to continue to press that button if that's the way Clemson's going to play pass defense. Washington on that drive, only three for three for 81 yards. We told you he was a much better passing quarterback, and he's already shown it. May not look like Dan Marino, but it gets there. 6.52 to go in the quarter. We're tied at seven. College football in high definition is presented by Vizio. Georgia Tech comes out throwing and ties it up with their second possession. A touchdown that makes it 7 7. Scully to kick to the dangerous Sammy Watkins who waits a yard deep in the end zone. I think the coaching point here is. Kick it as hard and out of the back of the end zone and as far as possible. Uh oh. And this is anything but that. Skips to Watkins inside the 10. Up the sideline and knocked out of bounds. Our first chance to check in with our buddy Reese Davis. Reese. Oh, Mike, Ed, Taco Bell studio update. Check out in Lubbock, Oklahoma, grabbed a 7 0 lead on Texas Tech. But Kenny Williams answers. Seth Diggy led his team right back down the field. And on ABC right now, the 17th ranked Sooners. In a fight there in Lubbock. Yeah. All right, Reese, thanks very much. Clemson here trying to regain the momentum. They'll start from their own 23 yard line. Ellington on the read option. He's hitting the backfield and taken down so far. Georgia Tech getting penetration from their linebackers. That was Brandon Watts. And Janine Edwards reported while she was listening to Al Groh talk to his defense that they were closing down. Georgia Tech was closing down too much on that read option and not getting upfield enough. That time, instead of the defensive end crashing down, he went up the field and Ellington had nowhere to go. Nice adjustment by Groh. Boyd sits in the pocket after a pump fake throw sideline and too deep. You're a Georgia Tech defensive player. Can you just imagine the pressure on every down? And, and the, the problem they've had at Georgia Tech has been communication on defense with these hurry up teams. This obviously feels like slow for Clemson comparatively. But they have had some problems this season with their communication. Got Lewis Young back in the secondary. That should make them stronger back there. That pass is complete to DeAndre Hopkins. His nickname is Nuke. That's what you hear the crowd yelling. And Nuke picks up 19 yards. He catches the ball so effortlessly. He has sensational hands. Good route runner. Works so hard on his craft. It was almost like Sammy Watkins who there for a while not quite but when he was out that young man stepped up. It was a gain of almost 10 as we check in with Janine Edwards. Well Mike just as you and Ed were talking about Al Groh tried a one game experiment of staying upstairs in the box for their game last week because they were not getting the plays called in fast enough. But you know what he said he felt like an air traffic controller up there. He said it was calmer. I could see everything but there just was some energy and leadership lacking. So he's back down on the sideline this week and spent a, spent a lot of time talking to his guys before that last series. Janine I know he's much more comfortable down there. A Chu was putting pressure on Taj Boyd again bearing down on the quarterback. They like a Tauchu lined up on that left defensive end on third and one though that zone read has been the play with motion that has been the problem. Wouldn't be surprised if Chad Morris has a zone read look and tries another throw down the field. Remember Morris likes at least 12 throws down the field a game. Boyd on that keeper. When you have that back coming across in motion underneath he's got to take somebody with him and it opens up the middle. The front side linebacker the linebacker that is on the side where the motion ends is frozen because if they hand that off especially to a guy like Watkins who's essentially running full speed there is no way if you're Jabari Hunt days if you don't sprint full speed to that side you're going to make the play so you're frozen. Boyd over the middle and that one is complete to the 37 yard line caught by Adam Humphreys a very quick wide receiver one of the more athletic players on this team 
a team that is loaded with athletic players. Boyd looks a lot better than a year ago, doesn't he? I had I had Clemson against Virginia Tech last year early in the season, and I thought he looked like the best quarterback in the country in that game. And and he admitted he kind of let his preparation go. He let some of the stuff go to his head, and uh, they went during the off season, and they put together their kind of self scout film of all the disaster plays, what went wrong. And he learned a lot about how much control he has, especially in the run game. When he does that zone read, better read of the defensive end. It just his entire game elevated because of those struggles he had in the second half of last year. And that's when I had him in the second half. He did not look good. But his throwing motion, his accuracy, it, this is an elite guy if he continues to improve like this. Boyd Humphreys. Excuse me, Sharon Peak. Gain of 27. That time, Boyd had a choice of three different guys to throw it to. This is a zone read look. I don't think they were running the zone read, but then they had Peak sneaking out and running a flat route. I, it just, it's so difficult. They make you defend every inch of the grass. Roderick McDowell is the running back. He gets the carry. Runs into traffic. And once you run into T.J. Barnes, number 90, you're really not going to go a lot farther. <laughs> Six, seven, three, forty-five. He lost 30, so he could be a full-time player. And he's a guy who plays on that straight on the nose guard there. Really nice extension. And you see right there at the end the finish. You see that rip move where he took his left arm. Because of his long arms, he was able to push, the, press the center off of him, Freeman. And then he does a rip move to the side of the ball. Good technique. Boyd with a pump fake tries to take off. Now comes to Watkins in the flat. Watkins knocked out of bounds at about the seven yard line. Watkins just always seems in such control of his body, and it always feels like nice footwork. You saw him in the pocket. He's buying more time, and he's so gifted with his arm, even if he's on one foot. His shoulders were square. This is this is a really impressive guy and I maybe a fade to Watkins up here to the top. They can get a first down inside the one. Boyd. To the end zone and behind Hopkins had him open. And that's a dangerous throw. That was across the body with a ton of traffic. This is one I promise you Chad Morris is going to meet him. Taj Boyd on the way over and say Taj you cannot throw that ball. We cannot come away with an interception in our own end zone. Chandler Catanzaro who is riding the crest of a school record 16 straight field goals will have a 24 yard chip shot to add to that record. Catanzaro struggled as a freshman, made second team all conference last year, shooting to be an All American this season. Clemson up by three. Let's see if Georgia Tech wants to go to the air and test that Clemson secondary again. They had so much success on the last series. Washington, reverse option. Fakes the pitch, keeps it out across the 30, near the 35-yard line. Nice block by Shaquille Mason, the left guard. Watch as Mason pulls around, and usually you, lo you leave the defensive end, M Malachi Goodman, unblocked. But that time the guard comes over. Mason and gets a, a good enough cut block. He didn't cut him all the way through, but if you die, if you get through those legs and stay up, you tangle up the player's legs and he can't make the play. Sims. That was a fake. They toss it back. God high. And God high still on his feet to the Clemson 43 yard line. Somehow Georgia Tech seems to save its best for the Clemson Tigers. A lot of so that misdirection earlier this is the true triple option reading it all the way and what Paul Johnson said if they take away our fullback and our quarterback the pitch man has to be a big play for us because someone's going to get nicked somewhere in the pursuit and if we get all the way to the pitch man there should be some grass out there that was a gain of 23 Clemson so young on defense they're extremely talented but starting six sophomores Tevin Washington 
untouched till he got inside the 20. If a play works, come back to it. Watch the pull again by Shaq Mason, the left guard, coming to block on the defensive end. Goodman gets the inside thigh. Goodman just hangs up just for a touch long enough, but Paul Johnson ran the exact same play, not back to back, but he ran it, ran another play, then came back to it. Clemson is trying to play what people do against the option, inside out. You have to stop the fullback. Then you have to stop the quarterback, then the pitchman. And the mistake Goodman is making is he's standing there waiting for the blocker to get to him. He has to go attack the blocker. Sims straight up the middle, tripped over his own man, or he might have scored on that. And that so-called B-back, the, the B-back is the fullback in this offense. If that player is has productivity, you're in trouble. Goodman and his line mates. Goodman, a guy who's a senior, the only senior up front for Clemson. And these defensive coaches say he seems to think a little too much. We need more out of him. And you can see him kind of standing there on those cup legs, a little unsure. Sims, again, did not have a chance this time. Quadrant Christian comes crashing through to get him, the junior, along with Josh Winston, one of the tackles. Clemson in the red zone has not been very good. Excuse me, they were not very good. Uh, they have not been very good in the last three games. You've got to think option, I think, if you're Clemson. Orwin Smith and God High, the running backs on the wings. Smith got a block. 10 5 touchdown, Georgia Tech. <laughs> Boy, are they taking advantage of misdirection and this young Clemson defense. For his career. Orwin Smith has averaged 9.7 yards a carry. He is the number one active running back in that department in the country. 9.7. And he's put them ahead. ESPN College Football presented by Cars.com. Georgia Tech on top, number 15, Clemson, 14 to 10. They've done it passing on one drive, and on this latest drive, they did it running. I think Paul Johnson has called a masterful game. Those passes on that second series has put Clemson on their heels, and this is a young defense that has had some problems with assignment errors early in the season. They look confused right now. Watkins will have to go seven yards deep to get this kick, and he will take a knee. Watch the two blocks on the outside. God high the A back, and right there at wide receiver, Darren Waller. The cornerback runs in, so Waller lets him go. God high comes and kicks him out, but that was an excellent job by Waller, who continues in and blocks number 11, Travis Banks. So that edge, which Clemson was so bad defending, a couple of weeks ago against Florida State is still very susceptible and that's that's a huge issue because that's exactly the alley the option is trying to attack. Clemson goes back to work on offense. Boyd has a tip forward catches it anyway and took a shot right in the face mask and that's going to be a penalty as Jamia Thomas who had a huge fourth quarter against his team last year just blew up Brandon Ford. And this is going to be a targeting call. Personal foul. Number 14 on the defense. That's 15 yards from the run. 
Automatic. Go fast. So when I was watching this with my naked eye, it looks to me like Thomas hits him with his head up and in the chest. I'm not so sure if this is targeting. Well, the head's down. Cool. So in in you always think about targeting as above the shoulders. What they're calling Thomas for is he drops his head and the crown of his helmet is the first thing to hit. That is also targeting. That was the correct call. And uh, that's exactly why they threw that flag. Good job. Well, he got his money's worth. That's for sure. Sammy Watkins on the flanker around. He gets the carry, picks up about six. And remember, Brandon Ford loses his helmet, but he does not have to come out of the game because it, the helmet was lost because of a foul. Holding, holding, number 18 on the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, still first down. That's Jerron Brown with the penalty. As soon as the defender gets outside the frame of your body, you've got to let go. And when he's going to pursue, you, you can have those hands in tight on that, on those shoulder pads, the breastplate of those shoulder pads, but as soon as he gets outside for contain, you have to let him go. Boyd, quarterback draw. Or as we saw in that last play, you can just hold on to the whistleblower. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the end of an exciting first quarter here at Death Valley. 14-10 Georgia Tech, but Clemson is driving. Ready to start the second quarter in Death Valley. It's 14 to 10 Georgia Tech over the Clemson Tigers. But the guys in orange have the ball at the Georgia Tech 45 yard line second and eight. Look at the numbers already 300 yards in total offense and counting. On pace for 1200 plus. Boy. Throws too high. Boyd got very for Hopkins. Boyd got very lucky. Algro dialed up a delayed blitz. If he would have held that for just another click, that could have been a big hit and a fumble. One thing that Chad Morris talks about with his quarterbacks is you get the ball and you hitch, hitch, throw. And that's exactly what Boyd did. It was not a great throw, but he threw it on time. If he doesn't, that would have been a big hit. Throw underneath, and that's to Roderick McDowell and Atachu is there to make the tackle. And I like that call by Chad Morris because he gave himself a manageable fourth down. Georgia Tech. Wow. Are they punting this ball? No, this is. Yeah, it's wow. on the punt team. How are you not going for it? And and Georgia Tech has to call a timeout because. They I'm fully out. expected Clemson would go for this. I, I'm just not quite clear. Unless they're going to run a fake, but you're going to if you're Georgia Tech, you'd leave your defensive front out there for the fake. I'm, I'm confused why Clemson wouldn't be going for this at this point in the game at this part of the field. Well, maybe we'll find out when we come back. <laughs> Clemson with the decision on fourth and one. The one thing they haven't shown is the possibility of a field goal. They have the wind at their back and two guys who can kick it a long way. Spencer Benton kicked a 61 yard field goal earlier in the year an ACC record and here they go. I, the timeout by Georgia Tech brought Clemson to their senses. I would expect this is the right decision. I think I would expect another zone read look and maybe Taj Boyd carrying the ball again. He has had no trouble on that play gaining five yards every single time. And there is the delay. He's got the first down. I mean if they're going to give it to you you might as well take it. And a Chu had a chance for a huge game changing tackle on fourth down and he just lost his footing. No blocking at all by Brandon Ford. Brandon Ford looked like he might have gotten tripped on his way to a Tauchu, and he missed it. Boy, way over the head of Brandon Ford. 
He may have been throwing that away because somebody was speeding toward Brandon Ford who might have had a good angle to pick it. Well, and number 45, Atalchu came unblocked again and was getting a jump right as he was throwing that. Right Atalchu now. Atalchu is spending as much time in the backfield as Taj Boyd is. Warm day, starting to get those hands on the hips. He's been moving around a lot. We'll see how he holds up. Second and ten. Ellington. Ellington all the way to the 20. When we were talking to Al Groh, he said, everyone talks about Sammy Watkins and how consistent DeAndre Hopkins is. He said, I'm not so sure that Ellington, who had an unblocked linebacker, Daniel Drummond, standing in the hole, made him miss and then made a great move on the uh, safety to pick up another five or six yards. But Al Groh was saying, we're more concerned. And remember, Ellington was a guy with an ankle injury that missed last year's right. ball game. His backups came in and had two fumbles. So you could make the argument that Ellington being out last year had a huge influence in that game in Atlanta. Ellington was stopped by Daniel Drummond after a gain of about a yard. So call it second and nine from the Georgia Tech 19 yard line. Is that read option again? Boyd comes back to the near side. Stays on his feet, picks up about six. Big third down coming here with 13.34 to go in the half. And this feels to me like something Chad Morris, the offensive coordinator, may be thinking about something in the end zone here. He's got his jumbo package in there right now and the toss to Ellington. He's got the first down and Ellington to the eight and a half yard line where it'll be first and goal. He got those guys on the field very quickly, got to the line of scrimmage very quickly, so Georgia Tech couldn't counter it. And Georgia Tech could not get enough bodies over to that side of the formation because Morris went so fast with the big personnel, it went to an old school kind of running formation and Georgia Tech could not shift their defense to the left fast enough. McDowell checks in as the tailback. McDowell gets the carry. Mark him down inside the three yard line. McDowell Jr., 5'9, 195. Jabari Hunt Days made the stop, and they've got that big package in there again with a fullback and two tight ends. This will be the 13th play of the drive. Three tight ends and a fullback. McDowell to the outside. McDowell, as the head linesman gets dumped, it's his call. He gets up and says, touchdown. And that head linesman may be injured. He took a shot. Yes, he did. He was cut. And Gary How Patterson, appropriate yeah. for this game. And Gary Patterson, the referee, went over to signal the touchdown. The hardest thing when the play's coming your way, and it was actually the Georgia Tech players in their pursuit that ended up taking him down. Catanzaro on for the point after as Clemson regains the lead. And officials crews bring a backup. Usually travel a backup, and that's the head linesman Tracy Lynch. And it's all of the white bodies in pursuit, and that's the problem. Lynch has to stay on that pylon to see if it clears. And when those defenders, as Watts comes flying over, it is so hard. You're trying to get out of the way. I've actually manned that position in a spring game at Nebraska, and they had a play like that. And such Lynch lands on that left arm. Let's hope he's okay. Uh, he's tough. He'll rub a little dirt on it and be right back out there. You notice he got up and made the call as the referee came over to look at him. He certainly had the presence of mind to say, I got it, it's a touchdown. Pretty good first half at 17-14. To the score. 17-14 Clemson in a seesaw first half. Tigers kicking off. Orwin Smith and Tony Zenon are deep for the kick of Spencer Benton. One of the reasons they like Benton on kickoffs, he's also a very good tackler in case there is a return. He's going to make sure there isn't this time. 
One of the things that is very difficult about blocking or defending the cut block is how good and, and fast Georgia Tech gets to you. So the first thing you have to do is close the distance to the blocker. We've seen Malachi Goodman wait for the block to get there. And even though they weren't great cut blocks, they got to him. Then you have to force the man to the ground and then clear your feet. So you have to attack the blocker, force him to the ground as he's going for the cut, and then clear your feet. That's a lot to do when the ball's right behind the guy who's blocking at your legs. Georgia Tech starts from its own 25. Washington sets to throw. Deep ball this time down the sideline, and that was beautifully covered by Rashad Breland. And one thing to be clear about, everybody in college football and the NFL cut blocks on a regular basis. A lot of teams do it on the quick passing game. Almost everybody does it on the backside of like a toss sweep or right. something, just so you can cut off the pursuit. Georgia Tech, one of the few schools that does the cut block as one of their base blocks in their entire offense. And so you see it over and over again, and you see all that weight on those offensive linemen's hands. They're not pass blocking. That was Tevin Washington's first incompletion. They'll go to the ground on this. Get maybe a yard with the fullback. An interesting statistic that most people don't realize. After a first down incompletion that results in second and ten, more than 60% of the time the next play is a run on second and ten. Yeah, if you're going to run it on first and there's a defender for Clemson who was trying to get off the field. Hopefully it's just a cramp because today is a great day for cramps. Temperature in the 80s, humid. And that's Bashad Breeland, a cornerback. And we've already seen Brent Venables, the defensive coordinator, who's trying to bring those cornerbacks on those fire blitzes. So don't want to lose one of your corners. And Breeland's getting the start today because he is a better tackler than Darius Robinson, the man whose spot he took this week. And you have to be able to tackle on the perimeter against Georgia Tech. And that's one of the things that when you're defending the cut block it's so hard you go through practice and Clemson after Florida State and getting ready for this game they went to live practice drills including cut blocking drills because with this young defense they figured we have to take the chance we might have some injuries because we're just not ready to defend this. Tell everybody what you mean by the line. So in practice usually if you work on cut blocks it's one on one at the beginning of practice and in during team everybody stays up nobody on the ground. Clemson has done live cut blocking with 11 players on offense 11 players on defense. That's rare to do middle of the season. Third and long Washington nowhere to go. Clemson diagnosed that perfectly. Grady Jarrett, number 50, the nose man at 290, chased him to the short side of the field, and then Tavares Barnes and several others caught up. And Jarrett just does an excellent job. The right guard went for, Morgan Uzi went for a cut block, and number 50 just whipped him right at the point, and Jarrett is the perfect combo of defensive linemen kind of short squatting he was a wrestler in high school so very good balance that time his quickness got right by the cut block of Uzi. Ryan Rodwell will have to punt and Adam Humphreys waits at his 35 yard line the low line drive returnable punt but Humphreys swallowed up before he could get even a yard and he was caught by Chris Milton for a loss of two after a punt of 40. Nice play on special teams by Milton. Tonight you can catch three of the top ten teams right here on ESPN. First at seven, Aaron Murray leads number five Georgia to face Marcus Lattimore and number six South Carolina. Then at 10:30, fresh off last week's upset of Stanford, number 23 Washington sets their sight on the second-ranked Ducks. Primetime college football presented by Hampton Hotels tonight on ESPN, also live on Watch ESPN. Michael Bennett, lead receiver out with a blown knee, but Malcolm Mitchell comes back to offense full time for Georgia. He's an awfully explosive player. Ford, as they tried to blitz and didn't get there, Ford takes it up to the 39 yard line on the quick throw from Boyd. 
And Ford is a guy taking over for his old roommate Dwayne Allen from last year who's come on in the last couple of weeks. Maybe a little faster than Allen not quite as strong. Boyd again trying to get something deep. This is overthrown. Watkins was well covered in Jabari Hunt days. Drills the quarterback. Rod Sweeting was stride for stride with Sammy Watkins. And when you can do that, you've done a great job. That was a nice job by Hunt days. Came on a delayed blitz again. Good clean tackle right in the midsection. That's we've seen that a couple of times where Al Gro is calling up the delay where the guy doesn't come right away. Clemson hasn't seen it a couple of times. They'll roll Boyd this time and thrown complete to Sharon Peake, the sophomore from Moore, South Carolina, who may just be the fastest player on this Clemson team. This is a guy in Peake who last year as a true freshman had some drops early and it shook his confidence. But you you got a sense yesterday. Wow, you, that's a fit. When when Boyd has it going, he throws it really well. Blitz coming again. Boyd too high for Hopkins. Again covered by Sweeting, and Sweeting is going to take that wide side of the field most of the time and leave the short side to Lewis Young. And jo Georgia Tech starting to get some pressure on Boyd, and it's starting to affect his accuracy. This, this should not be pressure. This is just the offensive line not quite sure what they have going there because that was just an easy inside move. That was I, John Cross, who yeah, got in Cross, there. Yeah. Ellington on the swing. First down and more. Ellington with all that speed. Nice block downfield by Jerron Brown. It's a gain of 40 and a four tackle by Isaiah Johnson. Number one whip. Good job by Boyd getting the ball out quickly. There was nothing open, and that was just excellent blocking downfield by Jerron Brown. Washed his guy right by Ellington as he was running. Just a lot of work downfield by these uh, receivers. Very nice. Boys to the end zone for Hopkins, and he was beautifully covered by the Young. And Lewis Young hand fighting him. You're going to have to do something to beat Lewis Young. He can cover. And the crowd booing a little bit because of all the hand fighting at the end. But that's two players fighting. There, there's no Sir. advantage game there. If anything, Hopkins was taking the fight to him. So I like the fact that there was no flag called. That's pretty good cover. That's great coverage. Not pretty good. Ellington maybe gets a cup. It'll be third and goal from the three. Euclid Cummings was in on the stop. Isaiah Johnson up from his safety spot helped out. What do you like here on third and three? Something really fast to the edge. Maybe Sammy Watkins in motion. One of those quick flip tosses. Got a lot of bodies right here. And you got basically one on one on the outside as Watkins comes in. Hopkins. He throws and throws incomplete. Had a man wide open and missed him. I don't think you have to play this much. I don't think you have to have tricks like this. Too much? I understand you want a lot of offense in, but with a guy like Boyd, I would have him throw it. Now you've got fourth down. Fourth and three. I think you kick this. I'm with you. Yeah, I think you kick this on fourth and three. I mean, Brandon Ford couldn't have been any more open than he was. And Hopkins just missed him. You only go up six, though. I, I, this is a tough decision. It's a really tough decision. I, I, I think you could go either way here. I think the field goal is fine, but you're going to make Georgia Tech go 97 yards if you miss it. So, Well, to me, it's the second quarter. I'd like to get some more points. And I'd like, to, right. get, I'd like to get them guaranteed. And you get a kicker like Catanzaro. He's not missing. But you've got to think if Georgia Tech gets it going offensively because they can score in bunches especially as tough as your defense has played. I'm thinking seven instead of three because you get into that second half your young defense starts getting tired in that fourth quarter. Georgia Tech if they've got things going 21 28 points in the second half if your young defense goes down. Well this may be the conservative way to look at it. I'm thinking. 
what am I going to do if I'm down by four in the fourth <laughs> I and know. I look back and say, boy, if I'd only kicked that field goal, I'd only be down by one now and I could win it. I just think with your defense struggling the way they are and, and the struggles they've had, especially on the perimeter in the run game, I, I, I understand the decision here. I think the aggressive call and maybe the one I would make would be to go for it here and think seven and then make Georgia Tech go 97 yards if we didn't make it. Catanzaro was already hit from 23. This will be from 20. And after that argument I'm thinking he better make it. <laughs> and he did. Catanzaro was two for two and Clemson is up by six on Georgia Tech. Twenty to fourteen, Clemson leading Georgia Tech. We're here in Memorial Stadium in Death Valley with 8:49 to go, first half. Mike Patrick, Ed Cunningham, Janine Edwards, our entire crew. Glad you could join us on a beautiful day for football and a seesaw ball game. Smith and Zinnen are deep for Spencer Benton's kickoff. Drove the last one out of the end zone. Line drives this one through the end zone. We go to the studio and Reese Davis. Reese. Plus yard runs all season. Tech starts from its own 25 yard line. Clemson crowding the line of scrimmage. Showing a six man front. Washington reverse pivot. Here's the toss. And out to the 40 goes Robert Godhai as we check in with Janine Edwards. Well, Mike, defending Georgia Tech and preparing for it has been the bane of Brent Venable's existence this week. He said it has been so, so frustrating. And the frustration is actually showing on his face behind the benches here as I've been checking in with him. He said, you know, with young players, he said we were still tweaking things up until Thursday. We've got to stay disciplined. And Davo Sweeney's been coming over and telling them the exact same thing. Janine, defensive coordinators are warriors to start with no matter what <laughs> kind of offense the other team plays but if you play a big time spread or this kind of offense you don't get any sleep that week and for Brent Venables he comes in first year from Oklahoma and uh, they've slipped this year but to be fair they lost three defensive linemen to the NFL they only have one senior no juniors on their defensive front they all think around here they're made for the run but they knew coming in that this year was going to be bumpy on defense. Washington on the pitch to Orwin Smith. Smith, 40, 35, still on his feet. To the 20, running through tackles. Travis Blanks, who they think is going to be the next great defensive player at Clemson at linebacker, just missed the tackle. Stefan Anthony goes to the running back, and that was just a slow read. I'm not sure who had the pitch. Quandon Christian. The linebacker as Anthony the other linebacker went to take the quarterback it looked like nobody knew who had the assignment of the pitch man fullback straight up the middle and it's Zach Lasky and Lasky came into this game only one yard short of the numbers rung up by Tevin Washington he's had a sensational season but Sims has been getting most of the carries at that B back position we know it's fullback and Lasky was a defensive secondary player last year actually was in the depth got in and you'd think fullback 240 250 but Lasky put on a little bit of weight but he's not a big guy just over 200 pounds but it's more about athleticism at that position than blocking in this offense it sure is Lasky again fighting down to the seven yard line and if you can in this offense pick up three four five yards every time you hand it to the fullback you're you are going to have a long long day defend you have to defend the option fullback first and the triple option fullback first and then get the ball out of the quarterback's hands as soon as possible so you know that it's in the third option's hands. And right now, Clemson's not even slowing down the fullback. Yeah, if the fullback's going to get five yards every carry, he's going to get an awful lot of carries. That's efficient. 
Down to the three on first and goal. And right now, Clemson defensively is trying to stunt and slant their defensive line, and they're getting caught in the wash. The only way, if you're going to call stunts against the option, it's because you want penetration to stop the option sooner. But if your guys get caught up and don't penetrate, now they've left their feet. Basically, they've allowed themselves to be cut, and there's nobody left to defend the, the fullback. Georgia Tech way behind on ball control. That's unusual. But this drive will help that. And Lasky down to the one. It'll bring up a third and goal. You know, Paul Johnson last year after the game in Atlanta said, you know, great game, what happened? He said, we got ourselves in a shootout and we had the ball last. I kind of have the feeling that's what we're seeing here sure this is. afternoon. This feels like whoever has the ball last is going to win. They're at the one, and the Clemson crowd comes to its feet. Georgia Tech bidding to take the lead. Washington, second in the nation in touchdowns, and here is a timeout, Georgia Tech. Second timeout. Uh, the Clemson players wanted a penalty against Georgia Tech. They thought the center moved, but he got a timeout, or someone did. And that was a little different formation for Georgia Tech. Did you see how wide the splits were by the offensive line? And I think that's a new wrinkle that Georgia Tech had for in the goal line, and I think there was confusion of what they were supposed to do. And it did look like Catlin Alf Alfred, the center flinched, but maybe the timeout was called before then. Dual threat quarterbacks square off in a Big Ten showdown on ABC Saturday Night Football tonight. Taylor Martinez in the number 21 Huskers ground attack goes to the horseshoe looking to knock off Braxton Miller and undefeated Ohio State. The Buckeyes number 12 this week. ABC Saturday Night Football tonight at 8 Eastern. Well here's Catlin Ford and you notice the splits by all the offensive linemen. But watch the center as Tevin Washington goes to back up. He flinched right there. It was ever so slight, but the umpire was already calling timeout. That's the umpire's call. I'm not so sure they didn't miss a five-yard penalty. Hey, look at the back. Clemson defensive line. Was yeah, I'm not sure that timeout was called before Catlin flinched. Lasky, 37, is the B-back or fullback. Washington, his 12th. Rushing touchdown of the season, he leads the nation. That was a nice read. That is an option to Orwin Smith to the outside. And Tevin Washington, Coach Johnson has said the one thing he's been working on, when you see a gap, put your foot in the ground and get up the field. Watch what he does right after the fullback. He just turns and goes. He is supposed to ride that down the line to Orwin Smith, but because it was soft right there in that, they call that the belly. You hear that term, the belly play? After you put it in the belly of the fullback, there's usually a soft spot, and that's exactly where Washington walked in. I'm all too familiar with the belly. Thank you. The point after will put Georgia Tech on top. It has gone back and forth since the opening kick. And Georgia Tech now has a 21-20 lead on Clemson. Denver Down Farms, not very very far away from the Clemson campus, certainly a fun place for kids to visit. And at this time of the year, all sorts of mazes and pumpkins and all that good stuff. Right now, there's 81,500 people more concerned about a football game as their team has just fallen behind. Sammy Watkins with that speed. Driven out at around the 25-yard line. Last year, number five, Clemson went into Atlanta undefeated, but in the first quarter, 
D.J. Howard fumbled the ball. Rod Sweeting recovered it. Six plays later, Orwin Smith ran it in to put the Jackets on top, 7-3. to three. Near the end of the first half, Tech was up by 14. Tevin Washington ran it in to make it 24-3. Then in the third quarter, Clemson with momentum. But Georgia Tech went on to win it 31-17. They have won five of the last six against the vaunted Clemson Tigers, something that might surprise you a little bit. Watkins across the 30 to about the 34 yard line. Watkins for the most part has been held under control in this game. He's only played coming into this one a game and a half out of the first five because of being suspended for two and sick for a game and a half. It was a nine yard gain, his longest. Boyd avoids the sack and gets the first down. A Taochu who may be starting to get a little pooped. Yeah. Couldn't quite make the tackle. Missed last week with an undisclosed injury did a Taochu. But that's uh, the second time where he's been free and not been able to make the play. They're getting the Algro's getting him where he's the best rusher the best player up front. He's getting where he wants him but he's got to make those plays. Boyd throws underneath. It's going to be a short gain only three yards as Humphreys makes the catch. You know, talking to Al Groh this week, who's been around the game forever, especially on the defensive side, talks about these modern offenses and how much they control the game now. They control the clock, they control the personnel, they control everything about the game. It's just changed so much. Boyd with time, now he's pressured. He can keep plays alive, throws that one sidearm to Hopkins. Hopkins! Touchdown. Taj Boyd has just broken the school record here at Clemson. He has 50 career touchdown passes, breaking Charlie Whitehurst's record. And DeAndre Hopkins showing you how dangerous he is the season ended the day he would have the career record for Clemson. He's averaging better than 120 yards a game catching the football. You hear so much about run after the catch. Having really gifted hands is such a help because you don't have to lose your leave your feet to make tough catches. That ball was thrown hard and high and Hopkins just reached up and snatched it so his feet never had to leave the ground. And you can start running sooner. It seems like such an easy thing, but it really does help your yards after catch when you can make grabs like this. Boyd's so good this year keeping plays alive with his feet. But you saw he just, it's so effortless that as soon as he's catching it, he's putting his left foot in the ground knowing I've got to cut back against the grain to pick up the big yardage here. I, he may not be the fastest guy on the field, but he has such great body control, such wonderful hands, and what vision to know the safety was coming over the top. Catch it, put my left foot in the ground, and cut back. Wonderful. One of the other reasons he is better this year is because he really dedicated himself to the weight room. He's stronger this year, and that that can't hurt when you're shedding tack. And he's a young man who was playing basketball and gave it up after last year. Chad Morris said, through the spring, the summer, and the fall, you saw Hopkins get stronger, and here was a key, more confident in this offense. Very bright guy, he's starting to feel where he needs to be in the coverage, along with his quarterback, Kyle Boyd. And I think you're right in your assessment, Ed, last team with the ball wins. George Tech will start from its own 25-yard line with three minutes and 40 seconds to go. First half. Here's the amazing part right here. He just broke the record with almost half the attempts it took Charlie Whitehurst. Yeah. Now, Charlie Whitehurst, a fine quarterback still in the NFL, played in a much different offense, but that is sure. staggering that it took him almost half the attempts to get to more touchdowns in the career than Charlie Whitehurst. Washington on the pitch to Smith, nowhere to go. Taken out of bounds at the line of scrimmage. Good play by Xavier Brewer. 
And I'm starting to see a few more linebackers rotate in there for Clemson. That time it was Jonathan Willard playing on the weak side outside linebacker spot. I think that's one of the adjustments Frank Venables, the defense coordinator, is making is taking out some of those young linebackers and saying, I've got to get some of these guys in here, like Shuey, who have been around the block a few times. They may not be our most explosive players, but I, I think this is the choice by Venables just to get the guys who know what they're doing on the field. Washington goes to the shotgun. Four-man rush, quarterback draw. He'll get seven. Here's Reese Davis. All right, Mike, Mark Lou and I are locked in on several games. The LSU Florida game is a polar opposite of our game. People are getting lit up in that baby. And we'll look ahead to Georgia and South Carolina tonight, give you the keys to victory for both teams and plenty of great highlights. Oklahoma and Texas Tech are going back and forth. Sooners having some success against that highly ranked Texas Tech defense. Third down for Georgia Tech, trying to keep the drive going. Washington on the pitch to Smith. Orwin Smith! Boy, he's shown speed. He gets to the sideline, and it looks like somebody has an angle on him, and he just runs away from him. And now Georgia Tech, I think, needs to speed up. They don't have any timeouts. This is not a throw-based offense. So I think that they're going to need to speed up here, even though they're on the plus side of the field. But that time, Shuey and Willard, who were there on the spot earlier on that pitch, were slow getting over there. And the corner was knocked almost completely out of bounds. Great lane. But Georgia Tech, with no timeouts left, they've got to be very careful with this clock, I think. 15 big plays this year. 25 yards or more, the best there is. Quarterback draw, only a yard this time. The clock running down to 139. Shuey made the stop. And they're just not built to hurry up, are they? I, well, there's a lot of... I know there's a minute 30 and you're on. It just seems this is way too much time to be killing. You, you have the ability to call plays and get them in and call them from the line of scrimmage. So I'm surprised. This this Look how much clock they just took to get one play from scrimmage. And now it looks like they're completely out of the offense they normally run, too. No sense of urgency whatsoever. Washington underneath. Down to the 27. They have to reach the 25 for a first down. So the clock will continue to run from the end of the last play to the end of this one. It was 34 seconds. This is way too much time. They're out of the formation that they normally run. If they go fast, they can stay in the option. Now they're in shotgun, and they don't look comfortable in this. Big third down here. Nobody was covering the slot man. He was wide open. Washington throws for the end zone. And, and again, I, I don't want to beat this up, but with that time, if you go fast and get plays in fast, you can stay in an offense that suits your guys. Being in shotgun and having to throw corner routes when Clemson knows you're going to throw and is going to be in coverage just plays right into the hands of the Tigers. Now fourth and two. And they apparently going to send on the field goal team. Scully has only kicked two field goals this year. His long is 34. This will be 45. He certainly has the leg to do it. Kicking into a slight breeze. Line drive and he missed it. So Georgia Tech gets off a handful of plays in the last two minutes of this half and comes up empty. And now Clemson 24 seconds two timeouts ball on the 28 yard line. And with these weapons. Yes. I will be shocked if Clemson comes out and takes a knee to go to half. I think you keep your foot on the gas here. And they are. They, I, I just think you go after it with this many guys on offense and Taj Boyd and two timeouts. Why not try to get this to midfield a little bit of unrest from the fans and I agree with him. I mean if nothing else maybe a screen. I mean you got Watkins Hopkins Ellington and if they go 20 yards then you get one or maybe two throws towards the end zone. Well Clemson will be happy about this. They are leading at the half. 
Let's check in with Janine. She's with Dabo Sweeney. Coach, let's start with the frustrating things first. I know you've had some words with your defense. What are a couple of things you've got to clean up on that side of the ball? Well, we got to contain the ball. You know, they're getting outside us, and uh, we're not doing a very good job of containing it. Right now, they're living off the big plays, and uh, we've scored every possession offensively except the first one. So we got to get some stops and, uh, and, and get the ball back to the offense. But it starts with leveraging the ball outside in, and we're not doing a good job of that. But on the positive side, it looks like your quarterback, Taj Boyd, is really just starting to settle in and really yeah. find his feet. What are you seeing from him from the beginning of the game to right now? Yeah, I thought in the beginning he was he, he, he was he was a little shaky and uh, just a little off, but he settled in. He's gotten in a rhythm, made a couple big plays, and uh, we're going to need him to play great second half. That's the challenge. Okay. Keep it going. Thanks, Coach. Dabo, Janine, thank you very much. At the half, our score, Clemson 27, Georgia Tech 21. Now we send you to Reese Davis and the Lexus Halftime Report. The <laughs> reference, Gershel. I wanted to make sure nobody thought, did, did Mark get something stuck in the slope? No, he's just breaking, <laughs> just showing his varied talents. So like Taj Boyd did, scoring there, Clemson's up by six. This Halftime Report is presented by Lexus. Introducing a stunning work of technology, the entirely new Lexus ES. Welcome back to the ACC on ESPN. ESPN College Football presented by Cars.com. 27-21, Clemson over Georgia Tech at the half. When we talked about this ball game before it started, I think everybody expected Clemson to score a lot of points, but Georgia Tech maybe not. They've hung in there. The one part of the story I think people miss was how Clemson was struggling on defense. Yep. As the game got started, Taj Boyd and Tevin Washington, of course, we knew they'd be the story, but as the game got started, Taj Boyd was struggling a little bit. Wasn't exactly accurate, so they got a little more of the running game in. Fake to Sammy Watkins. He dives in for the one-yard touchdown, uses his feet again to find DeAndre Hopkins, who makes a sensational move back to the middle of the field for the touchdown. But Kevin Washington and this Georgia Tech offense caught Clemson off guard with the pass. They went almost exclusively to the pass in their second offensive series. And that led to them being able to move the ball in the run game. I would suspect we're going to see a little more of that. First, second down passes for Georgia Tech here in the second half. And those numbers for Tevin Washington, of course, his completion percentage has been pretty good all year. But there, remember, at the end of the half there, they tried to go to that shotgun. They were not hurrying up. So let's see if not getting points out of that drive cost them as this game goes on. I assume it will against, Clemson, against Clemson's offense. Zinnan six yards deep. He'll take it out to the 25. And let's go to Janine Edwards. Well, guys, Paul Johnson just told me he's pretty pleased with the way his offense is performing right now. He said we're spreading the field. Our option plays are working, although their starting center, Jay Finch, has a calf injury. So right now he is not coming in. He's questionable to return. He says we have cleaned up some of our communication issues on defense. That seems to be working well. We are handling Clemson's tempo very well. And as compared to last week when they were walloped at home by Middle Tennessee, he said our energy today, the difference is night and day. Janine, they've got a sophomore center in there, Catlin Alford. And they'll go right after him as Washington keeps on the option. Stefan Anthony, a 6'3", 235-pound sophomore is the starting middle linebacker. And this is such a young Clemson defense. And Georgia Tech has taken advantage of that youth. Anthony, a guy who sometimes his eyes deceive him. Young players, just a sophomore, has a lot of ability, but that's the thing that Brent Venables and his defensive staff have worked on is just when you see it, trust it. In the last couple weeks going to Florida State, Anthony really struggled with that a few times. Washington reverse pivot. He keeps it and was one step away from breaking that one. Got out to the 29-yard line, taken down by an ankle tackle. The third and six. Good stop by Goodman and Willard. Otherwise, he got a chance to pick up another 15 yards. And 
It sounds easy, but if you're Clemson, you have to think option here. So as, as the defense lines up, you got to go through your head. Who's got the pitch man? Who's got the quarterback? Who's got the fullback? You've got to go back through those assignments in your head. It makes you think a little bit. Blitz coming, Washington to throw. And they are right at the sticks. It looks like they'll get just enough for a first down as Washington got that ball out. First down, get the tackle. And it was in and out of the backfield who made the catch. And it is a first down by the nose of the football. And that was, boy, that was awfully close. I, I didn't think I, he made it. It looked like it. I think they may have gotten that spot right. But you see what happens when you're so focused on that option and Zenon leaks out the safety who's in man coverage on him, believe it or not. He's got to be in man because your corners are in man late getting there. Washington has got the pitch and he tosses it to Zinnon. Across the 40 to about the 42. That was the nice. option, if nothing else, Ed, makes you make the right play on defense every time. And they'll run it until you make a mistake. And when you do, they'll kill you. Well, it drives me nuts this it's assignment football to defend the option. Defending any offense is a, you have to follow your assignments. But what happens is. And, and Dabo Swinney said it best. You get bored doing your job because it does feel a little rote. Run to the quarterback, make him pitch the ball. Run to the quarterback. And so you start trying to make more plays. Oh, well, I'll make him pitch it, and then I'll go play the pitch. Well, then he cuts it up, and it's a 50-yard game. This is going to be another first down at the 45 as the B-back, David Sims, carries straight up the middle. And ever since the start of the second quarter, that's been a very effective play. That missed field goal and the missed opportunity where it felt like they might have to have some shots towards the end zone or at least get closer for an attempt where they got all the way inside Clemson territory there before the half. Maybe a big one for the Yellow Jackets. Washington sets in the pocket floats it on a wheel route down the sideline that's going to be out of bounds. Well Mike one of the things we showed earlier was how you have to defend the cut block. Watch what happens. This is last year's game. There are three cut blocks that end up being on the back side and you see all those Clemson jerseys on the ground. Look at the alley that opens up because there's no pursuit from inside out. Now that was a mistake by Christian the linebacker who was supposed to force the pitch but I don't think it matters. Pitch or quarterback on that play. Because of those three cut blocks, it opens up that alley and just stops the backside pursuit and opens up the big play for the option. Sims, the fullback, rolling on top of bodies he was never down, gets all the way into Clemson territory at the 47-yard line. And remember, all teams cut block. And it's it's a lot on that backside because if you get one guy down typically there's two or three pursuers that are either going to have to run around him. Yes. Run the hump and, and give up ground to get there or they're going to fall down. So any effective cut block along the way sometimes can set that fence that allows the runner to cut up. Only one wide receiver to the near side. Washington that looks like it might have been a busted play but Washington. On the run to the 10 to the 5, dragging a tackler with him to the 2. Jonathan Meeks kept reaching for him, never got a good grasp, and it's a gain of 43. Again, Tevin Washington right away saw that there was a soft spot behind the B-back Lasky, and Meeks came in, and because he grabs the face mask to start, Let's it go because he doesn't want to tackle Washington by the face mask and it gets another eight or almost ten yards after Meeks has, has to let go of the face guard. Lasky back in at fullback. Washington with the carry touchdown. Tevin Washington now has 13 rushing touchdowns this year to lead the nation. 
When you only need two or three yards, he turns up inside on that play, and there's nobody there to cut him off. And that time, you know, we talk all the time about cut blocks. That was actually a good drive fit block by the right guard, Uzi. He was working one on one on a 335 pound defensive tackle and knocked him back about four yards. And that's exactly who Washington followed. And Uzi is their best. He is a two time All ACC performer on the Outland Trophy list. Number and this, 77. And this is just a straight fit drive block. Nice job keeping his head up. DJ Reader, a true freshman, was lined up inside, then he stepped to the outside. And because Uzi had his head up, he made a nice adjustment, and that's a good drive block there at the point of attack. Scully for the point after and the lead. That is the fourth Georgia Tech drive of better than 75 yards. They know how to go the length of the field. Dodson to the end zone again. It is caught. Touchdown. Dantzler hits it. Dantzler. Touchdown. Clemson wins. Johnson got it. Touchdown. Georgia Tech. This has been a very intense series filled with close, close ball games. 12 of the last 17, in fact, decided by five points or less. Georgia Tech, although you might not think it, has won five of the last six in this series, even though Clemson has been terrific over that span overall. Watkins from the four. And taking it down at the 19-yard line. And now for today's Aflac trivia question. Good luck with this one. <laughs> How did Dabo Sweeney replace as wide receivers coach at Clemson in 2003? You are a steely eyed missile man if you get this one. I'm not even sure you could find that on Google in under five <laughs> minutes or less. I'm sure there's a couple people on their couch trying <laughs> at the moment. Taj Boyd is already thrown for 251 yards, comes out with a flanker screen to Hopkins, and he's knocked out of bounds. Hopkins was 77 yards receiving. Sammy Watkins has been held under control for the most part, six for 42. We haven't really seen many long throws. A lot of the throws have been underneath to Watkins, and that's one thing Morris said he likes to do is at least 12 shots a game. Out in the flat to Humphreys, and Adam Humphreys will have enough for a first down. Got a pretty good crew of wide receivers on this mm. club. Sammy Watkins, because of that viral infection last week, they're trying to limit his plays today. Not quite 100%. He's been on the field, and that's about the mark they were hoping for. Probably three quarters of the play when plays when the game is over. Boyd play action, fake throws, and off the hands. Jerron Brown. Ball was thrown just a little hard. I think Brown yeah. should still be able to make a play on it, but maybe just a little more touch on that throw would have helped. When you're just turning your head around, that ball's there with that kind of thumb on it. A little tough. Ford, the tight end, goes in motion. Boyd. <laughs> Hopkins to the 48 and the crowd cheers nuke and that nickname comes from the brand NUK pacifiers because when he was a child that was always in his mouth so he became nuke to his family and nuke has a couple of hands he he just it's effortless the ball just sticks bet you anything he never dropped a pacifier <laughs> <laughs> Ellington stopped at the line of scrimmage. That play just looked like a bit of a disaster from the start. You can, when you have this much offense and this much going on, sometimes you have some of those plays where it looks like, what in the world was that? Intercepted right in the hands of Sean Green, and the nose tackle takes it back to the 25. Taj Boyd threw it right to him, hit him between the nine and the seven. 
What a huge mistake. And this is a nose guard defensive end stunt. Watch as Atauchu comes in. The nose guard comes around green, and he's standing right in the passing lane. Because he was stunting, he read the quarterback the whole way. If Green weren't on a stunt, if he were just rushing the passer, he wouldn't have seen that whole thing. And there's no way in the world it's so hard as a quarterback when a defensive lineman stops in his track and reads you. You're not seeing that. You're watching for the clear of the line, and you dump it. Nice job by Green. When somebody is in the wrong place, it can be a nightmare. And the last year in this ball game. And this is the second time that right guard Uzi for Georgia Tech has been slow getting up. They can't lose him. They've already lost their starting center, Jay Finch. But the game last year, four turnovers, two of them in the fourth quarter when Clemson was starting to get back into the ball game. But the one thing that Georgia Tech does, they're eight of nine this year converting turnovers to touchdowns. They make you pay when you turn it over. Sims. Rolls down to the 16 yard line. Jonathan Willard, the linebacker, made the stop, but he got enough for the first down. They mark it just inside the 16. And I think they're going to lose. He's down yeah. again. Yeah, he, I, it seems like he may be struggling with cramps. Usually, when a guy goes down this often with the leg straight, it's some type of cramping. And it was much warmer today than. I think many people expected here in early October, but and Uzi, as we said, he's their best. The senior 63307. And that's where they've been running that yeah. fullback to the yeah. right and then the quarterback following number 77. We saw that great block that he threw on that touchdown on DJ Reader. So this would be a very big loss for Georgia Tech because it does seem like he's the guy they've been running behind the most. Janine Edwards, what do you have for us? Well, guys, after the offense came off after that last series, Paul Johnson very upbeat in speaking to his guys and reminding them, though, that Clemson is blitzing every third down. So he wanted them to be aware of that and ready for that, and they were going to design a play to try to exploit that. And he did tell me at halftime, remember, he said, this game may come down to a turnover, and they just got one. It usually does, doesn't it? And that's got to be an unexpected one when your nose man intercepts a pass. And, and it's that it's one of those perfect call against the play. There's no way Al Groh knows that he's going to loop his nose guard towards where the, where Clemson is setting up the screen. But you know sometimes you dial up a, a line stunt and it falls right in your lap. Washington nowhere to go this time. Firing through Deshaun Williams. The sophomore at 6'1", 285, slipped his block, and it looked like he got through the hole that would have been occupied by Uzi, number 77. Yeah, they had to bring in number 78, Trey Braun. And it's not often you see an offensive lineman go out and say, wow, that's really going to hurt this offense. But with Uzi out, they liked going to that right side. Watch them maybe start to work the left a little bit. Fullback straight ahead for a couple. And you're just not quite seeing the same movement to that no. right side. I know you feel like you're making some hay over to the right, but when you lose Uzi, and that can also be a function of your quarterback. In an option, sometimes your quarterback's better one direction than the other. That could also be a function of the play calls as well. Washington has rushed for 99, thrown for 101. Big third down here, third and seven. Sims is the lone running back left, and Washington to throw. Blitz coming over the middle. And about a yard shy of the first down, Godhai made the catch, fought for extra yardage. He's going to be very close. I don't think field goals are going to win this game. No. I don't and think. It's, yeah. And it's a classic option situation. Yeah. We can get a yard, is their thinking. With with uh, Uzi out at right tackle or excuse me right guard, I don't think you have to do anything fancy here. I'd want this on an option. If the fullback's there, take it. And if not, Washington plants and goes up. I think this is the, uh, the right decision in this type of ball game to go for it from Georgia Tech. But wouldn't you go left of center instead of right? Right seems to not be as good without Uzi in there. That's for sure. 
Sims is the fullback. Fumble. Back up center. And if it's short of the line to make, they'll get it back anyway, and they do. The offensive line is the closest, most well-knit unit on a football team. And you've got two subs in there right now, and it creates a lot of problems. And this is exactly where the problem happens, because Deshaun Williams lines up right in that gap. And the center... Alfred, who was in there for the injured Jay Finch, I believe he short arms it. I've been there. I was a center. New guy in the game. You've got to get some movement on a 300 pound lineman, and you fire out and you short arm the snap. Happens a lot. Because it's a hard block for him. He's got to extend his body and get out, right? Yep. And you, and you usually, you're trying to get to him so fast, you short arm it, don't get the ball all the way back. Let's go, baby. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Buick. Experience your kind of convenience, peace of mind, entertainment, and luxury. Members of the Clemson Sailing Club on nearby Hartwell Lake. We had a political science club. We didn't have a saving, uh, sailing club. Shouldn't they be wearing life vests out there? You would think. Safety first. 14 drives, no turnovers. Last two drives, each team has turned it over once. Ellington broke one tackle. Gets out to about the seven. And look at all the personnel coming in. That's one of the things Al Gro said is so hard. When they, Miami did the same thing. But these teams that just run so many players on and off the field. And they can play different positions too. You see a couple of tight ends go. You think, oh, they're going to be tight. But they, then they can spread you out like this. McDowell is the new tailback. You've got Daryl Smith, number 40, a blocking back in there. He's on the right side, and they hand it off to Sammy Watkins on the flanker reverse. He gets out to the 10. They need to reach the 17 for a first down, and wouldn't this be a big defensive series for Georgia Tech if they could hold on third down here and force a punt? I, I think this will be maybe like a, 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 a read zone or a screen, but... We have not seen many deep throws at all by Clemson, despite the fact that Chad Morris, the offensive coordinator, tries to run at least 12 a game. Blitz coming. They don't get there. The pass underneath complete to Hopkins. Hopkins breaks a tackle off to the races and knocked out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Gain of 37, a huge third down and a fresh set of downs for the Clemson offense. And had a receiver running an out cut underneath, and Hopkins just came right behind it. Ball delivered on time, and once again, he is so good after he catches the ball. Ellington. Dragging a Tao Chu with him for 12 yards. There is a marker down. No flag on the play. There were four men in the backfield. First down. It is hard to officiate a team that does this much on offense, too. You think of the stress on the officials when they have to count how many guys are in the backfield to see if it's a legal formation with as many shifts and things as Chad Morris does. It's, you're going to get a couple of those wrong. He is the architect behind this multiple offense as Boyd chased out of the pocket. And will go down a loss of about three. You've got to understand Chad Morris in his second year here as the offensive coordinator is only two and a half years removed from coaching at Lake Travis High School in in Austin, Texas. They won the 6A state championship. That's the highest classification. But he now is the highest paid coordinator in college football. One point three million dollars a year after two and a half years ago. He was the high school football coach at Lake Travis. That being said, that's a big deal in Texas, and he was making a hundred and a quarter to coach high school football. And give Todd Graham, the then head coach at Tulsa, if you're a Clemson fan, the credit for talking Chad out of coming out of the high school ranks to be his offensive coordinator for one year at Tulsa. 
And it was a hard sales job because that was a pretty good job that Chad Morris had at Lake Travis High School. That's one of the top programs in the entire state. Blitz coming. Wide open at the sideline as McDowell could not keep his feet inbounds. When they blitzed, they had no one out in the flat to cover it. Well, and you see the difference between, remember we've seen Hopkins catching the ball so easily and being able to continue to run. Not a perfect throw, but when you're not quite as sure-handed as Hopkins, your feet get a little tied up. And McDowell, if he's able to snatch that ball like Hopkins, he might walk in. And when they're wide open, you just want to make sure you get it there. <laughs> yeah. Don't air mail him. Don't skip it to him. Just get it. And then the receiver, the receiver, and it's a running back who's not naturally yeah. as as natural a ball catcher as a guy like Hopkins is thinking. Get here, get here, hurry up and get here. This will be the 65th play the Clemson offense has run in this ball game. They'd love to run 85 to 90. I think Boyd was down before he threw it, and he was. Euclid Cummings was putting the pressure on him. Boyd's knee hit before he unloaded the ball. That's a sack. As he's back at the 20-yard line. Well, uh, Boyd should just throw that away as we have looks like the tight end Brandon Ford coming off a little pimpy. It's easy to cramp today. But now you're third and long. And again, you're in a game where I think you gotta think seven. So maybe with a screen or something, you try to cut this to a manager the fourth. Boyd gives to Ellington. Inside the 10 to the 5, first and goal, Clemson. Georgia Tech defensively, I think, is running out of gas. Yeah, looks like it. Yeah, I, I think nothing real fancy here. And that was just slow reaction by Drummond, the linebacker. Not much of a block there, but the guys in white all have the hands on the hips look, especially all the big bodies. I think. I think they may be running out of juice. Well, they've been out there on defense for 66 plays. That's an awful lot. Isaiah Johnson came in to make that tackle in the backfield. Nice job. And now with the tight end Ford out. The tight end has been such a big package for Chad Morris in this zone. So with the tight end out, you still have 86 Sam Cooper who's in motion here. Those are the guys they normally look at. He's not the same receiver as Ford, but he'll get this one. And Cooper gets inside the five to the four. Caught a touchdown pass earlier this year. That was his fourth catch of the season. And much better job that time by Daniel Drummond, the linebacker. He stayed home. And Cooper got bumped a little bit on his motion coming back, so it messed up the timing. But good job by Drummond no, not leaving his area knowing it was coming back. Drummond got to start today after six starts a year ago at linebacker. Boyd on third down over the middle knocked down almost intercepted. And it was Jabari Hunt days who got one hand on it almost able to pull it in. And now Clemson will go for the chip shot field goal and almost extend the lead to four almost exactly like last year when Taj Boyd threw a couple of interceptions late in the ball game that with Clemson roaring back you thought they may win it but this is a forced bad throw it's it's you've got to lead that receiver as he's running across it's behind and days almost makes the pick Catanzaro extends his school record to 18 straight field goals Wave. So go Tigers. ESPN College Football brought to you by the new 2013 Ford F-150 with EcoBoost and Bank of America. Oh. Have a little fun around Halloween coming up. And you know that fourth and five. If that was fourth and two or one, I think Clemson probably goes for the touchdown, but. At fourth and five, they're thinking points. But, you know, they got away from the quarterback run inside that 10 yard yes. line. Remember, early in that first half, whenever Boyd ran it, it seemed very effective in, inside the 10, but it seemed like they got away from that a little bit. But understand the field goal at fourth and five, fourth and two, you probably go for it. Catanzaro now has 
19 consecutive field goals breaking his own school record for Clemson. Here's Reese Davis. Mike time for Sports Center right now presented by Discover Card Florida and LSU Florida finally put together an offensive drive Mike Gillisley goes in for the touchdown 7 6 Gators big review right now in a long pass completion impossible fumble by LSU. Will Muschamp trying to make a difference down in the swamp and get the Gators back where all Florida fans believe they belong. Georgia Tech will go back to work. The toss to God high. Makes another man miss. God high. What a run. Knocked out of bounds in midfield. That play was going absolutely nowhere. A reversed course ran the entire width of the field and turned it into a 25 yard game. And with all the white shirts, he had some blocking, but Xavier Brewer is standing there on the backside. And that was a nice job by Godhai. Brewer tackles that for about a two yard loss if he makes that tackle, but he got a little heavy. His head started going down. He couldn't keep his feet, and Godhai made him win. Three carries, 62 yards. That was sensational. Washington gives off to the fullback, gain of one. Well, we asked you our Aflac trivia question Who did Deb, uh, Dabo Sweeney replace as wide receivers coach at Clemson in 2003? The answer, and there's a reason for this Rick Stockstill, the current Middle Tennessee State head coach, and last week, Middle Tennessee State. Had a huge upset, knocked off Georgia Tech. And Middle Tennessee State, after a tough start where they lost to McNeese State, had put three wins together. And as they get into Sun Belt Conference play, they're playing Louisiana Monroe, who upset Arkansas early in the year and took Auburn all the way into overtime. So Sun Belt getting underway. You know, you hear the uh, the term six degrees of separation. That one may have been seven degrees. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jimmy Johnson and Dale Earnhardt highlight a star studded field when the chase for the cup heads to legendary Talladega. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Talladega tomorrow, 1 o'clock on ESPN. Something to watch for is the strategy at Talladega. In order to stay out of trouble, you're liable to see even a pole sitter like Casey Kane be all the way in the back of the pack for a long, long time, just trying to avoid the inevitable wrecks. And stay out of trouble, and then everybody goes racing late. And that was uh, David Sims who was helped off the field for Georgia Tech, the backup fullback. That's the end of the quarter. This is a good one. Clemson on top of Georgia Tech, 30 28. College football in high definition is presented by Vizio. 15 minutes of football still to come your way from Death Valley. Clemson clinging to a two point lead. 30 to 28 over Georgia Tech. The Jackets at midfield. Washington on the pitch. There goes Orwin Smith. Another huge run inside the 15 before he's rolled out of bounds. Boy, he's got acceleration. Nice job by Will Jackson, the right tackle. Watch him get the hook block right at the point of attack. Excuse me. He clears to go inside, and that leaves the outside linebacker, Tavares Barnes. Free to do it, and Meeks is just late getting over there and looked a little slow getting up as well. Once again, it looked like two guys had the quarterback and nobody had the pitch man. And that's Lasky, the B-back, stood up behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard on that one. And that's exactly what Brent Venables was saying. If they get to the pitch guy, if we if if we don't force, if we don't get that ball contained and they get it to the pitch, that's where their big plays are. And, this Clemson defense starting to look a little bit like Georgia Tech did Everybody's on that tired. last drive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we're going to see. I think we're going to see two or three touchdowns at least back and forth before this is over. As tired as these defenses are. Orwin Smith has 119 yards rushing on six carries. This is Zenon. Cuts it back. 
only just inside the 10 yard line Crawford and Shuey took him down. And in addition to piling up all those yards Smith three carries and 33 yards or better. And watch Crawford this time fight the cut block. Excellent job. You see him clear his feet there. The backside the guard Mason was coming in but that time Corey Crawford did an excellent job of clearing his feet. Now because he was able to do that you get Georgia Tech in a bad down and distance for them. Good news for Tech. Uzi is back in there. That pass is incomplete. Knocked away from Lasky by the linebacker Jonathan Willard who had excellent positioning. And Georgia Tech will send out the field goal unit. They can get the lead back. And Tevin Washington needs to throw this ball a touch earlier. They had Willard frozen. But because that ball's a little late getting out, Willard was able to get back over there. They had what they wanted. Washington just a touch late getting that ball out. Scully from 27 yards missed one from 45. Knocks this one through and quiets the crowd as Georgia Tech regains the lead over Clemson. 31 30 with 13 03 left. ESPN College Football is available anytime, anywhere on your computer or mobile device via watchespn.com and the Watch ESPN app. Let me give you a couple of stats, Ed Cunningham. Taj Boyd is thrown for 344 yards. Hopkins has four catches for 129 yards. Touchdowns of 15, 19, 37, and 58, and they're still behind. <laughs> well, they have a defense that's struggling. Then there's your answer for why Georgia Tech could be in this game. Clemson, but Georgia Tech's missed a couple of opportunities. They had a fumble down inside the 10. They get it to the five, and they only get a field goal out of this last drop. Ellington on the return won't go down drags tacklers out to the 25 26 yard line they all look tired both, yeah. uh, both sets of defenses just look like they're whipped two different reasons for Clemson they spread you out they run you vertical they get personnel in and out they hit you so many different ways they go fast for Georgia Tech they're going at your legs. They're going at your legs. You're having to push down. You're having to clear your feet. All the things we've been talking about. And it starts to wear you out. I think the team that closes on offense inside the 10 the next couple of times ends up being the winner here. 122 plays have already been run in this ballgame as we check in with Reese Davis. Mike, I'm not sure why anybody would look away from our game, but if they want to take a peek, a live look in powered by PlayStation Vita, Oklahoma is just smashing Texas Tech. Illinois and Wisconsin Badgers have pulled away. Those games on ESPN2 or ABC. Reese, thank you very much. Clemson back on offense with another first down. And we had mentioned in their last drive that Chad Morris has gone away, had gone away from the quarterback run that had been so effective in the first half. So calls up a quarterback draw and picks up the first down. Already had 904 yards in total offense. We still have 12 and a half minutes left in this game. Ellington. Well, they barely got him. He got across 40 to 41. It'll be second and five. Daniel Drummond made the tackle. Number 30 for Georgia Tech. Not exactly West Virginia Baylor from a week ago, Getting but close, it's, it's a workmanlike <laughs> yeah. rolling up of yardage. If there is such a thing. Yeah. <laughs> that game was lightning. Boyd. Still looking, gets out of bounds in front of Drummond, picked up maybe two. Well, give him a yard down to the 42. They have to reach the 46 for a first down. You sort of get the feeling anybody that gives a ball off on a punt is giving the game away. You do, don't you? And here you are on third and three. Watkins is wide up top to the right. He's been the guy who's come in motion a ton for that kind of speed read option. Let's see if they bring him in motion this time. Five-man rush coming. Hopkins 
to midfield and a first down. Boy, as soon as he caught that ball, he just turned and drove upfield. What an amazing catch. Because Atalchu was right there in coverage, and Hopkins actually had to wrestle that ball away from Atalchu. Now Ellington comes back into the backfield and will get the handoff. Another little wrinkle from the brain of Chad Morris. Let's go back to that Hopkins catch. I, I am just blown away. Look, he just has so much control of the ball. Tauchi was standing right there in coverage, and he just reaches right in front of him, fights him for it, and pulls it away with one hand. He already has well over 700 yards receiving. Straight up the middle goes the backup tailback, Roderick McDowell. And Jabari Hunt Day stops him, but after he has a first down. That time, Rich McMahon, the umpire, got tangled up. Remember earlier, we saw the headlinesman Tracy Lynch go down on a touchdown. That time, the umpire getting caught in the mess. Boyd, one pump fake goes for the end zone. Wide open, Hopkins, touchdown. The pump fake did it. Isaiah Johnson bit and Boyd laid it out there. And Clemson trying to get their kicking team off because this is a go for two situation. Up five, you want seven. So somebody got on the headsets and said, hey, get the PAT team off of there. We've got to go for two here, guys. And this. Remember that quarterback run inside the five was so effective in the first half. A career high 387 yards passing for Taj Boyd and for DeAndre Hopkins six catches 172 yards. Now they go for two. Direct snap, snap to Ellington Hopkins throws to Boyd. Chad Morris doesn't get much sleep. That probably came to him on a Tuesday night about 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and one of the things that Chad Morris talks about is making it fun for his players. So when you have a guy like De DeAndre Hopkins who can make catches like this, takes it right off the top of the defender, and then... How do you defend it? The quarterback's walking around behind the line of scrimmage like he's audibly, and then he gets a pass from the guy who just made the touchdown catch. We have had seven touchdown drives in this game of 75 or more yards. Are you kidding? Hopkins. 172 yards, two touchdown catches after a week ago with 197. And that was not an easy catch he had to make over the top of the safety Johnson for a touchdown. Ball came a little late from Boyd. And, but once again, number six goes up with those fantastic hands and snatches him. And down at the one. Holy cow. Chris Milton fields the kickoff. His feet go out for under him. Well, when the momentum starts to go, oh. little tiny mistakes, and with this crowd noise, I have a sense, though, Georgia Tech is up to this challenge offensively. They mark it to two, so they're 98 yards away from tying the game. Washington in the end zone, throws almost intercepted. Corey Crawford. 
Stafford, the defensive end, nearly with a gimme touchdown. And what was Tevin Washington thinking? Well, they brought what looks almost like a zone blitz. Watch the blitz, and then the defensive end, he doesn't quite, Cover doesn't quite back out, but he's reading. You can see he is not on a rush. That was set up for him to either read the option or the pass. The blitz inside was why the defensive end had not had to come, and Tevin Washington had no idea that 93 wasn't rushing. Lasky is the fullback. Pitch to Orwin. Smith, it's a safety! What a huge play, Spencer Shuey! That's the danger of running wide, backed up in the shadow of your own goalpost. It can blow up on you. Penetration that time by 93 Crawford, who made the good play earlier. And Shuey, the middle linebacker, the right tackle, never got to him. He got knocked off by Crawford, and Shuey, the linebacker, gets there for the safety. Spencer Shuey, the 6'3", 230-pound junior linebacker with the defensive play of the game. Forces a safety. And now it is a nine-point margin. And Clemson gets the ball right back. Go right back to that touchdown. Ray Bino, the left tackle, is trying to go through. But watch Shuey, the middle linebacker. Bino's going to get knocked off. A little bit of his path by Crawford, the defensive end, but Shuey was reading that right from the start. He sprinted to the spot. There was no way that Bino, even if he hadn't have been nicked, could have gotten there. That was a chance he played by Shuey because if the ball comes the other way on some type of reverse, you're completely out of position, but the gamble paid off. Clemson now looking for the dagger. Ellington picks his way to the 49. And now that clock starts to melt and melt and melt. And the one thing when we were talking to Chad Morris, he said, when we slow down, we tend to make mistakes. So even though you'd want maybe to slow down here, if you're Clemson, their flow of their offense is to go fast, and they're worried about mistakes if they try to slow down. Boyd on the roll. Hopkins makes another catch. Has it first down, and we have Reese Davis. All right, Mike, give you a look at what's going on down in the swamp. Florida has assumed command in the second half. Dominating play at the moment. Gillisley goes in again. 14-6. LSU facing a big third down play. All right, Reese, thanks very much. Got a penalty against Clemson. It's going to negate the first down. Ineligible man downfield. One of the wide receivers was covered, meaning there was an ineligible outside of him, so he cannot go out and around. Surprising with as many things as Chad Morris does with this offense, you don't see a couple more of those a game with basically what is just a bad formation because they do so many different things. Second and 13. Boyd with plenty of time now takes off. Drummond gets him at the 46, bringing up a third down. Here's Janine. Well, Mike, there is something that DeAndre Hopkins keeps on his dresser that he uses for motivation. It's a notebook where he writes his goals, and he was influenced to do this by a guest speaker that came to his middle school one day. And he said the reason he writes his goals is because he wants to be able to check things off. He's already checked off four of them, but I don't know if a conversion pass was on that list, guys. <laughs> Yeah, if he wrote down, I want 172 yards receiving against Georgia Tech, he can check that one off. Georgia Tech comes with the blitz. Boy, tipped and intercepted by Drummond. And Drummond back to the 46. That is a huge defensive stand. 
by Georgia Tech. Now, you just knew if Clemson was able to drive and score there, it could be over. And that was Jabari Hunt days on defense. And the crowd wanted pass interference because they felt like Hunt days got there early on Sam Cooper, the tight end. And you can see Taj Boyd very upset right in the slot there. Oh, and he did. Well, now that slowed down. If you look at that at regular speed, the officials are taught in a bang-bang situation not to call that. Washington being chased. Throws downfield, Orwin Smith with another big play to the 23. And I think it's worth going back because one thing we do is we slow things down and you say, well, that was definitely pass interference and therefore not a touchdown. Let's watch it in regular speed. As the tight end comes over and goes into motion, does he get there earlier right at the ball? It, it's close. I think that that's pass interference, but I think a no call is okay there. I understand your point, and I think that showing replays at regular speed is the only way to know on a bang-bang play. Quarterback swallowed up this time for a loss of two back at the 25-yard line. But that said, I still thought he got there early. It felt like it was a touch early. But, you know, on safety rules, they say error on the side of throwing the flag. Legal shift. On Georgia Tech. Two men moving at the snap. Still first down. Boy, that's tough for them to get to a first and 15. But what they teach officials, and I've, I've been through the training for this You've exact You've been through thing, officials' boot camp, right? When, when it's a safety issue, throw the flag. When it's a competitive issue, if it's what they, literally the term is bang, bang, ball, hit. If it's close and you're not sure, don't throw it. So I don't mind a no call there. I know Clemson's thinking, wow, we might have just gotten a job in a tight game in the fourth quarter. But again, watch it, regular speed from behind, and tell me if this is pass interference. It's just hard to tell who gets there first sometimes, and you shouldn't call it if you don't know. The infield fly rule is an easier call. <laughs> that ball was tipped, but Orland Smith caught it anyhow at the 20-yard line. I know Excuse they got me, behind. Jeff Green, not I, I, I know they got behind the sticks, but Georgia Tech seemed to just go right to the pass, which is not their offense. And now you're in, you know, that shotgun formation. They just don't seem comfortable. I just go back to my base offense. This is four down territory. Excuse me. You can think field goal. He, well, you're down 11. I, I just think Clemson's going to score another touchdown before this is over. They run the option, and there is nothing there. God high. Well, now you have to kick it. Yeah, I think so, yeah. too. A field goal gets you within. Got to make it 40-34, so a touchdown would win the game for you. Yeah, this is, I mean, I, to me, I just feel like if, if you were to score here, yeah, this is, I mean, look, I, it, it's the absolute right decision to kick it, but... Man, you just think Clemson offensively is going to be able to eat up clock and maybe go down and get a score here. Scully one for two. He has to make this field goal to give Georgia Tech a legitimate shot. Holy cow. We have seen one kicking failure after another this year. And it's crushing the Paul Johnson. That would have made it a one-score ball game. ESPN College Football is presented by Cars.com, where confidence comes standard. And in part by Mazda. We believe if it's not worth driving, it's not worth building. It's one of the special places in college football and some of these game day photos taken by members of Clemson's Student Photography Club. The blocked field goal means that Clemson is going to have to turn the ball over if Georgia Tech has any hope. Yeah, this would have cut it to a one-score game. Josh Watson lined up right in the middle. Great penetration. That, the, the kick was plenty high. It was the penetration by Watson. 
over Will Jackson who was a tackle had moved into guard but because of the penetration Watson gets a huge huge kick block at the end of this game yeah, if you get three yards into the backfield on a kick you got a shot to block it and it's not going to be the kicker's fault and of course the head coach knows how important that was never never a bad thing to have the man, head man come over and it's good for the future of your scholarship <laughs> yeah. Clemson has run 82 plays today if you're on that Georgia Tech defense you have to be gassed at this point and yet your coaches are going to ask you to pull off a miracle. A couple of yards maybe one Ellington and the clock continues to wind down we are now inside five minutes and you'll start to see them working the clock of that play clock a little bit more than what they normally do this offense is designed to get 80 or 90 plays a game but now they seem pretty content to let that 40 second clock get down into the single digits before they snap it. two point two score game you can't blame them. Georgia Tech comes on the blitz. The pass is tipped, but still caught. Hopkins. Not much. Dual threat quarterbacks square off in a Big Ten showdown on Saturday night on ABC. Taylor Martinez will go against Braxton Miller as Nebraska faces Ohio State. ABC Saturday Night Football tonight at 8 Eastern. It's an interesting matchup. Two guys who really can't rely on the passing game yet. Not exclusively, but boy, can they run. And let's check in with Janine. Well, Mike, it seems this Georgia Tech game was a turning point for Todd Boyd last year. You know, after the loss here to Tech, his house got egged badly by mad fans. He said it was so deflating. He thinks he and the whole team, their heads have gotten a little bit big before that game. He said we were 8-0, we were ranked number five. He said he learned a valuable lesson. Don't get caught up in all the hype and all the stats. He said, I don't watch ESPN before games anymore. I only watch cartoons. His favorite <laughs> is Family Guy. And I guess you could say he has learned his lesson. But he is getting caught up in stats because his stats are pretty impressive right now. Janine, you know what they ought to do if they want to make up for last year? Go buy a couple of dozen eggs and leave them on his front porch. He's earned them. And now you've got to think third and long. DeAndre Hopkins. Maybe an outcut with those wonderful hands. Wouldn't be surprised in a quarterback draw either. No, there he goes. Boyd on his feet and out of bounds at the 45 of first down and they had DeAndre Hopkins I thought maybe he was going to run an out cut but he ran an in cut right in front of the sticks but Boyd saw an opening and this is the difference this year and last year that time last year he just wasn't quite that decisive this time he puts a move right on drum and as soon as he clears the line of scrimmage on what would have been a fourth and probably six if Drummond makes the tackle but instead Boyd makes a miss and picks up the first and now they can burn a lot of the remainder of the clock Georgia Tech with two timeouts at its disposal but they're down two scores now coming up tonight interesting Georgia South Carolina what do you think about that one. Georgia has not been great this year defensively. I think everybody coming in because of the hype of Jarvis Jones thought, oh, they're going to be great on defense. And the growth at quarterback at South Carolina has been phenomenal since yes. the end of last year. And now you have a healthy Lattimore. I'm, that's another game with Georgia's offense. That's another game that could end up in that 30 40 yeah. per, per team score range. Well, that South Carolina front seven is pretty stout. They are. And it's about from one great atmosphere to another. I don't think we can get there by seven. No, do you? I don't think so. But a timeout, 310 left in this one.
Welcome back to ESPN College Football presented by Cars.com. It's Clemson leading Georgia Tech 40 to 31. The Tigers is trying to keep the ball and kill the clock. Boyd quarterback draw. Boy, does he get whacked as he got to the 40 yard line. Tonight you can catch three of the top 10 teams in the country on ESPN. Number five, Georgia, just talking about that against number six, South Carolina. Then at 10:30, number 23, Washington sets its sights on Oregon, the number two ducks this week. Primetime college football presented by Hampton Hotels tonight on ESPN, also live on Watch ESPN. I'm just your not old sure school fan. Washington in the top 25. Congratulations to them. <laughs> well. Unfortunately, I think it's going to be short lived. I'm not so sure. <laughs> awfully young, new defensive coordinator, awfully young on their offensive line. I'm just not sure they have what it takes to win in Eugene. Not sure anybody has what it takes to win in Eugene at night. <laughs> it's, a, it's amazing what that Oregon program has become. When I was in college, it? The University of Washington, they had a nice team. Rich Brooks, of course, who went on to Kentucky, did a good job, but. It's become a destination in college football. Yeah. Well, an awful lot of alumni support to help build that program. Never hurts to have a godfather, does it? No, it doesn't. Under two minutes. Ellington hitting the backfield, falls forward. As Georgia Tech is going to send the house. You know, at the top of the show, Mike, you were saying, what happens if Clemson wins out? And you look at that schedule coming up. Virginia Tech really struggling. Tough loss Aren't today they? against North Carolina. They're at Wake Forest. I think that's a win. At Duke, Duke's better. But I still think that's a Clemson win. I think they're better than Maryland. NC State's will give them, I think, a contest. And then it comes down to that South Carolina game at home. You win that. And Florida State looks like clearly they're going to win this division in the ACC because of that loss by Clemson at Florida State a couple of weeks ago. They essentially have a two game lead. I just don't see Florida State losing twice, but no, I don't know. An 11 and 1 Clemson team is absolutely going to a BCS bowl game, and that's two years in a row for a guy, a young head coach in Dabo Sweeney, trying to build a program. That's a. That's a pretty good deal if you can get the two BCS bowl games in a row. And this would be uh, on the other side of the coin. This would be crushing for Georgia Tech after two overtime losses, then losing to Middle Tennessee State. To lose this game, they would go to two and four. And that may be too big a hole to dig out of. Tigers third, maybe two yards to go. Ellington. Ellington to the 15 yard line. Now they're going to call and a the, flag. Yeah, they're going to call the horse collar. However, it looked to me like Watts, the linebacker, may have had a hold. The, the rule is personal foul, horse collar. I get some defense. Half the distance from the end of the run, automatic first down. The rule is if you grab the player by around the collar and pull him down in the immediate action, this is a penalty. It looked to me like Watts. Excuse me, that is not Watts. That is Thomas. I think that's a legal play. The rule is that it has to get, you have to pull them down in the immediate action. It looked to me like Thomas had a hold of it, rode Ellington for a second, and then pulled him down. I know it's a safety issue. You throw the flag a little more liberally, but I don't think that that was a foul. Straight up the middle, eight, nine yards from McDowell. Clemson has salted this one away. Both offenses were spectacular most of the afternoon. The defense is on their heels most of the afternoon. And you're up two scores. Your offense had some struggles inside the five, so. You, you, I don't think you take a knee here. I think you go ahead and play this out. McDowell is in there instead of Ellington. Yeah. 
McDowell to the goal line. Touchdown. So that gives the Clemson fans who are slowly working their way out of the stadium something else to feel good about as they leave. And a good hard fought win. Georgia Tech showed up after an awful showing against Middle Tennessee State and gave Hopkins and his mates everything they could handle this afternoon. But that was the difference today. Number six, whenever they needed a big catch, and they're going to review whether that was a touchdown or not. He and Taj Boyd really came up with some big plays. And we understand now what Dabo Sweeney was saying about, you know, how much he had matured this year and how much offensive coordinator Chad Morris said he can put his trust in him. He made some really good decisions. Well there you know this ball came out late. It's impossible to tell from that angle. Yeah. But the ball. If we have something else that shows that ball looked like it may have been coming a little bit loose on McDowell. But because there were so many bodies in the way I don't think that they're going to be able to overturn this call one way. You could the tell other. the umpire did not see it. He did not react at all if the ball did come loose and the side judge was coming in signaling touchdown. And we're not going to be able to tell from no. that angle either. There's just too many bodies there. And remember the call is a touchdown on the field so they have to have something to overrule it. Be a long trip back to Atlanta for the Jackets and Paul Johnson. After further review, ruling on the field stands, touchdown. So it's 46-31. And listen to these numbers. Clemson has run 93 plays to the 93 for 601 yards, six scoring drives of at least 65 yards. That's ridiculous. And a lot of them have been kept alive by DeAndre Hopkins. Hopkins, a guy who stepped up his game, gave up the sport of basketball to focus on football through the spring and summer. Sammy Watkins, who was suspended because of uh, a drug arrest in the offseason for the first two games, then had an abdominal virus, abdominal virus against Boston College and couldn't play. And Hopkins, two touchdown catches and a, a two-point conversion, which put uh, Clemson up seven in the fourth quarter. Pretty good afternoon for this young man. Yes, sir. Only average 24.7 yards a catch on seven grabs for 173 yards. He's one of those guys, you hear that term, body control? Yeah. His body is never out of control. When he's running his routes, when the ball's on the way, he has full, he has his cleats on the ground, he reaches up, snatches the ball wherever it is. And with a quarterback like Boyd, when he gets into a groove, you have Hopkins, you have Watkins, you have Ellington. Let's see if Ford, the tight end, he was taken in the locker room, what his injury is all about. But offensively, they're set. It's the defense where Clemson's going to have to put it together a little more. I am firmly convinced if you can't put pressure on a quarterback that's accurate and has an arm like that, you can't beat him. Like Geno Smith of West Virginia, if you don't rush him and put pressure on him, he'll pick you apart. The problem is the way they play the offense. I understand. You're so on your heels, it's tough to mount a rush. And the ball comes out so quickly. But the alternative is to give up 70. Yeah. And for Georgia Tech, they get, I think, a much needed week off before they play Boston College. And this is the third year for Al Groh as the defensive coordinator. They've had some struggles on defense, and they're doing everything they can to try to batten down the hatches. But you just start to have to worry a little bit, I think, about morale. Middle of the season, sitting at two and four, a tough loss on the road. That week off comes just in time, I think, for Georgia Tech. Yeah, two and four is certainly not good for Mariah. Loose ball. Washington recovers. The clock will continue to run. 
and Clemson gets a week off as well. And this is something that they they sold their defensive players when they said they were going to go to live cutting drills getting ready for this game. They said but the good news is you get next week off. Washington taken down at about the 18. The crowd comes to its feet. Here at Clemson, the only mark on this record, the loss to Florida State. But this team, as we said at the beginning of the telecast, with the talent to run the table. Once again, our final score, Clemson 47, Georgia Tech 31. Fred Cunningham, Janine Edwards, and our entire crew, this is Mike Patrick. Thanks for watching. Now we send you to Reese Davis with the college football scoreboard, presented by Honda.